Now we're going to work question 12 from practice exam 5. This particular question asks you to do some journal entries. So we're going to do some debits and some credits. And we're purchasing a machine, we're putting notes payable on the books, we're depreciating it. So it's somewhat a combination of chapters 9 and 10. So kind of an interesting question here. Uh, in this example, a machine has been purchased, we need to put it on the books. Uh, so we're just going to read the transactions and do them. Purchase 250000 a machine, and we paid 50000 in cash. The remaining goes on a note payable. Um, so that's really what we need. I mean, we need the note payable later to calculate interest and things like that, but we need to know cost of the machine, 250000 cash, 50000 the rest, 200000 on a note. So that's all we need to do this first transaction which happens on April 1. All right. So when you do a transaction, you have to analyze it and think about what accounts are affected. So we've purchased a machine. Great, that's an asset we're getting in. Assets increase with debits, always. If you're increasing an asset, that would be a debit. A machine is most certainly an asset. So there's our debit right there, 250, new machine. And 250. The credits, we need $250,000 worth of credits. So we know we're paying out cash, right? So cash leaving, cash is an asset, cash going out, that's a credit. So cash, 50,000. And a note, a note's a liability. Liabilities always increase with credits. So the note payable. is 200. All right. So there's there's our first transaction. All journalized. Machine 250 cash and note payable 250 debits equal credits. We're done. Now, the next thing that happens is we need to journalize the amounts and accounts for the first payment of principal and interest, All right? So this note has a payment due I guess every 90 days, June 30th, and on June 30th, once each year until it's paid off. All right, so that means June 30th comes around, we owe them some money, right? And apparently we're going to pay them a principal payment of 50000 And that's great. So 50000 cash we're going to pay out um, to them. But we also owe them interest and we owe them 90 days worth of interest. Um, so we need to calculate the interest first. And interest calculations have not changed. I know last time we did them was for receivables, but hey, interest calculations are interest calculations. So principles times rate times the time. So I'm just gonna do that down here at the bottom. All right, principal times the rate times the time is equal to, so our principal, is 200,000 equals interest, right? So 200,000 times our rate, which is 5%, times the time, which is 90 divided by 360. Um, and I think on the key, if you print out the exam key, it says 1 fourth. So all I did was you know, convert, when I did that last semester, I just converted 90 divided by 360 into 1 divided by 4. It's still just a quarter of a year's worth of interest, basically, is what we're saying. Quarter of a year's worth of interest. So 200,000 times 0.05 times a quarter of a year is equal to $2,500. All right, so that's the interest for the note through the end of June. All right, so that's what we need. We're going to pay them 50,000 cash principal payment, 2500 interest, and it's going towards interest expense in the note, right? So we're, if we're paying 50000 on this note, we're reducing that note payable, so that would be our debit, right? So this is 630, right? So note payable, right? $50,000. And we calculated our interest expense 
2500 expenses increasing right when you increase an expense that's always a debit so interest expense 2500 and so that means we're going to give cash to that company right they want to be paid in cash so 50,000 plus 2500 is 52.5 right cash going out 52.5 and that's that transaction. Next, journalized depreciation expense of $2,500. Great, so at the end of the year, we depreciate it $25,000. That's it, you don't even have to calculate it. Just get told what it is. So the depreciation adjusting entry at the end of, of the period is always going to be depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. So on... 1231, remember expenses are debits. Depreciation, expense, machine, and I like to put what I'm depreciating because most places where you work are going to have more than one thing getting depreciated. And of course the contra account is accumulated depreciation machine, right? and 25,000 and 25,000. So, that's done. That's all it asks us to do is just a regular journalize the depreciation transaction, which I think we learned that back in maybe chapter 3. All right. So the final transaction, we sell the machine for 350,000. Um, account for the receipt of the cash, the closing of the asset, and the closing of the depreciation. Account for any gain or loss. No payments on the loan are made at this time. So we don't really owe anything on the loan until next June. Presumably we will pay it off with the cash, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, so we are getting 350000 cash in. Somebody's buying the machine from us. Maybe we're going to go out of business. Um, so we're getting 350000 cash in. Um, so we need to close the asset account and close the accumulated depreciation, right? Account for any gain or loss on the sale. Um, so we need to figure out if there's a gain or loss on the sale, which means we need to know what we have it on the books for, right? A gain or a loss is always the difference between the sales price of the machine and the book value. Now in this case, we know the it's a gain because look, we're getting 350 and we only paid 250, so the book value has to be less than that, right? So in this case, book value, I'll just calculate it down here. Book value of that machine is the 250,000 cost minus the depreciation, which is 25,000, right? So I end up with. Um, that being 225,000, right? So that's the book value of that machine right there. So that means the gain, right, the gain is, well, the difference between the sales price. So that's, they're gonna give us 350 for that machine minus 225, what I have it on the books for, and that means my gain is 125,000. All right, so I need that stuff. All right, so now I have what I need to do my entries, right? So basically, I need to put the cash down, right? So 1231 cash, and they're giving me 350,000 in cash, so that's great. Yay. Um, I know that I need to get rid of this accumulated depreciation, right, because the machine's going away. So the accumulated depreciation account needs to go away, and the machine account needs to go away. So we know that the balance of accumulated depreciation is a $25,000 credit, so to get rid of that, we need to do a $25,000 debit. Accumulated depreciation machine. 25,000. All right, so there's that. Now, we also know that the machine is on the books 
as a $250,000 debit. So to get rid of that, we need to credit it, $250,000. So machine goes away, right? And we also know there's a gain, right? So obviously $250,000 is not equal to um, the, the, the $375,000. Um, total of debits, right? So we need to add that gain. That's how we make up for that. Gain on the sale is 125,000, just like we calculated. So now we got 375 and we got 375. Our debits equal our credits. We've gotten the machine and its depreciation off the books, zeroed out, put our cash, put our gain. We're good now. All right. And that takes care of that problem. Um, the only thing I would suggest you remember um, is that, hey, on the exam, there could be a loss, right? Could be sold for a loss. Um, if we even have this problem, I'm sure we will have something similar. Um, you'll probably have to calculate some interest. You'll, I mean, definitely at some point on the exam, you'll calculate interest. And if the machine gets sold for less than book value, that would then be a loss, and it would be a debit. Alright, that's it. Good luck on a problem like that.